Howdy, partners. Hey, let's start off this episode with a shout out to my friends at Deal Cole Crane in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Deal Cole Crane, where safety is always number one. That's right. What am I doing? Well, I'm gloating in Coveter's Paradise right now. <laughs> That was bad. You know what's worse? The topic of this. Oh, yeah, there it is. That's right. What's worse than my guitar playing is the topic of today's episode. I am in the middle of a project called the crappiest guitar in the world. When I'm done with that episode, it will pop up on a playlist when your life is so dismal that you're watching this episode five years from now. But today's episode is about guitar case safety. So let me tell you a couple stories. You remember the Archcraft guitar that I did some work on, did a binding job, all that. I'm going to give you a playlist to it right up there, right about now. But I went out on a guitar buying extravaganza that took me from uh, somewhere down around Lakewood, California, Tomorrow City today, over into Tustin, back to Ventura, and I, I ended up buying three guitars and trading two of them off. Anyway, I think I did an episode about this and I'll give you I'll give you a link to it right up there, but I redid a guitar that was in horrible condition all because of a guitar case. So I pull up to like a Smith's Food King or a Ralph's or something like that. And there's a guy sitting there and he's got an old chipboard case, kind of like this one, except worse, believe that or not. And he's got the guitar sitting on the table, and I literally grabbed the case to pull it to me, and it fell apart. And he said, be careful, don't let that fall on the ground. So I'd worked out the price with him before I got there. And he tells me, you know what, this guitar would be worth $500 minimum if it didn't have that hole in it. Well, you all know this guitar, the Archcraft junk pile. Yeah, look, look at this. It was beautiful, and then it went to Troy Murrah for a while. You know what? Forget feedback. Just put some duct tape over the F holes. <laughs> all right, Troy. You know what, I'm going to give you a link to something up there about this guitar. Uh, but the moral of the story is, what had happened is, this guitar was actually up in somebody's attic for probably, well, it's 90-some years old right now. And it had been up there for a while, and the case rotted away. So somebody picked it up, it fell out of the case, and what do you know, it cracked the body all the way across here. And put a big hole in it right here. And so I junk piled it up, fixed it all up. It sounds great when Troy's playing it. But anyway, there's a couple of things that you really want to think about when you are looking at a guitar case. First one, I'm going to remind you about this several times through the episode. If you are going to buy a guitar and you're not willing to buy a case that will protect your investment, don't buy the guitar. And don't be carrying people's guitars around to do work on it when they're not in a case that will protect it. That will become your problem later. Watch what's going on in your shop or in the shed. This shed where I live, it can be 110 degrees one day, and then a few months later it'll be down in the 30s. You really can't have guitars in that kind of atmosphere because they'll dry out, the finish will check, the wood will crack, all those kinds of things. But let's take a look at a couple of simple things 
that you can do to a guitar case that's going to make it a lot, lot more dependable and it will keep your investment safe because face it, some of these guitars are irreplaceable. Let's go to the bench. All right, let's get started with the hinges. This hinge was loose and we are going to replace the rivets that were holding it there. Now you don't want to use a bolt because if it's not smoothed over like a rivet, then it ends up on the inside, the head of the bolt or the nut or something like that, it turns out to be a hassle. So a pop riveter is a great thing to use. Now, you want to make sure that the size of the pop rivet will go into this hole right here, like so easily. And you begin this process by using a drill and going in through the guitar case because we're going to use a pop riveter from the inside. So the way these things work is they're different level, different size heads that match different rivets they typically store in the handle. And what you do is you take this part and you put it in the riveter like so. And then you simply from the inside of the case pushing out make sure that the head, the end of this, exits here where the hole is. And then you press into it and squeeze it and it will mushroom this out and do the same thing on the inside and pull everything together until this is tight. So let me get this set up and show you how to do it. We have already drilled through with the appropriate size where this will fit into there. All right, the case is open, obviously. Um, we have put one rivet in, and you can see the head of it is below the cushioning on the guitar. You can see that there is a hole here that was drilled in by, let me reach across the table in front of everybody, with this drill bit that is slightly larger than the rivet. So we drilled through from the other side, exited there. Now what we're going to do is we're simply going to load the rivet into the gun. We are going to push this through until I feel it on the other side. We're going to maintain pressure and we are just going to start squeezing. And remember, maintain pressure. It's important that you maintain pressure and keep working back and forth until it pops off. There it's underneath here. It cannot scratch the guitar. If there's ever any uh, issue with that, you're going to take a piece of emery cloth or just anything and make sure that that is protected. Let's close this up. Notice the head of everything. Chick flick tail pointer has been crushed inside the closing case negligence on the part of the employer. we got too much stuff going on here. But let's flip this over now and I will show you that we have two rivets there in the place where there was holes and everything is tight. While we're here, if any of these other ones are loose or need to be fixed, we'll drill those out. We'll take a tap, get a starting hole, an awl, anything you have, a center punch, pop a hole, drill these out. It's best to get one of these secured before you try to do the other one. Don't take them both off at the same time. Okay, next. That was really, really simple, but we kind of put the cart before the horse. Moth, you better take a hike, brother. Anyway, why did the hinges come loose? Why were they? Well, pretty simple, because there's a stop right here. This strap is supposed to stop the guitar case from opening too far. When it opens too far, then the weight of the case top leans out, bends the hinges, and at some point, that's where all of this went wrong. So, for want of a 
a little piece of what appears to be ribbon, we've got a case that started to go bad. So what do we do with that? Well, first thing we do is get one of these cheap razor knives. I like them because you can extend them. So I want to replace this piece of cloth here. So I'm just going to take my razor knife, extend it, and go in behind this and cut this lining away here and here, like so. That's simple. And then I need something to replace it with. I could use an old guitar strap. I could use a motorcycle tie-down strap. Or I could even go to Target and find a chick flick teal ooh, uh, belt that's on clearance for $5.10. And then I can take my Malco number 12, this, these things tear up license plates. I can cut this off of here and this stuff's pretty thick like so. And I just simply take my hide glue because I already got the heater running. You see that? My hide glue heater, I like hide glue. And I put a big glob of hide glue here and here, and I replace this strap just like that, however long I need it to be. And then I'll kink it this way, train it to kink inside, because when you shut the case, especially with something thick like this, you want it to bend in like this and still stop everything. Real simple. Okay, so the two old ones placed end to end equal the measure for this. And then I take what's left and put it in the Chick Flick Teal Hall of Shame. And I've got enough here to do well, at least a couple, three more cases, right? Oops, almost forgot. When you are gluing these tether straps in, uh, clamp them good and do one at a time that way when it comes time to put the second one in you're not trying to control keeping them both stable let this one fully dry so let's get on to the next thing i have said that and remind you numerous times in all my videos and stuff that these old k and harmony built arch tops these econo arch tops are prone to the neck breaking loose like this. You don't want this. And you don't want to encourage this. Well, how does this happen? Well, this guitar was built about 1940. And who knows what happens? Hot, cold. You can tell from the finger marks it was played a lot. This one's going to end up in Ireland, Belfast, by the way. But anyway... Let's look at a simple thing that you can do to almost ensure that the neck will either break loose or start edging up and getting that tilt where the action is so high you can't use it, okay? So let me get this thing out of the way. You know, I did an episode where I showed you how to build everything to steam off a neck. Link to that playlist right up there right about now. Okay, I think that we all have figured out this is one of the most chip cases that a Harmony or a K guitar came into, or a Christmas guitar, or at least it looks that way. And let's say we want to put this guitar in this case. I mean, how ridiculous would that be? Well, guess what? There's people who would do it because, well, it's the original case that um, I want to give off the vibe and all that other hipster garbage. Well, guess what? That's a problem. Because here's the deal. If you're seeing what I'm seeing right here, I'm looking down in here and I can put my hand underneath where the neck joint is sticking up that high above the bottom of the case and the neck is resting right up here so what does all that mean well 
I've taken the liberty of showing you that this there's this much space between the heel of the neck and the bottom of the case. It looks like that. Can you see that? Yeah, that much. So this is arched on the bottom here. This is sitting on the case. So what do I do? Well, I put this in here. I'm a hipster. I close the case, which I don't want to do right now because my glue job, my glue job is drying up over there. But you can see that the strings would be up here where the marks are. So I close the case and I have to baggage check this in this and I'm flying overseas uh, to where this might go to, I don't know, Australia, someplace like that. And somebody comes in and throws this on and somebody takes an American tourist or one of the metal Halliburton things full of weight and throws it on top of the case and the top of the case right here hits right here or right here. Guess what's going to happen? Yeah, that's right. Teeter-totter right here. And you can crack the bottom of the, the guitar. Or, if that doesn't happen, if you're lucky, the weight of the teeter-totter is going to end up right here. And it's going to pull your neck loose. Cindy Lauper, time after time, either that or it's going to crack this. So, yeah. You want to make sure that whatever case it is, you're going to take something as quaint as this towel right here and put it right there or get a piece of foam or something and put this here. So you're still balanced here, but that neck isn't going to have a point to snap and work itself loose. Remember, if you put a set of 14s on here, because everybody likes to do that kind of stuff, heavy strings. If you put a set of 14s on here, yeah, you're going 9s, 10s, 12s. Yeah, people like to play blues guitar, like a big thumper strings. Leaving those tightened up in a case is going to help all that. But guys, if you're going to have a guitar like this, get a case that you can literally drop, throw stuff on. Do not cause a teeter-totter effect or leave stuff heavy heavy strings on here finally see this it's a sponge it's not ringing wet but it's damp and it's a sandwich bag they have these new things called ziploc bags they've been around since i think 1860 anyway leave a little bit of it open put this in the case now we're just going to seep all over and leave uh, water stains on your guitar or something, but hydrate these guitars. So at the end of the day, make sure the strap is in great condition so it doesn't overextend the hinges, so you have to rivet the hinges. Make sure that the case you got protects the guitar. There's nothing cool about opening up a vintage case and trying to be a uh, hot rod hillbilly and finding out that your neck is broken off. Uh, and always hydrate your guitars. Big takeaway, invest in a good case. Okay, guys, there it is. That was pretty simple. Pop rivet gone, a piece of motorcycle tie down that was ready to be thrown away, or even one of those wicks out of an old oil lamp, and making sure that the guitar case has the right supports in relation to the neck and body. It's all really simple stuff. Now I'm going to get back to making that toilet paper guitar that I know you're just dying to see. Oh, I let that out of the bag. Uh-oh. Anyway, those of you that watched to the end are definitely in the know now. But anyway, a couple, couple more things to tell you. If people are goofy enough to have you or me work on their guitar, they don't want it coming back an old, a rare, irreplaceable guitar with some sad story about how it fell off the seat on your way to your shed. Don't take the guitar if they're not put in the case. That's just common sense. When you get it to your shed, don't have your shed be 105 one day and 30 degrees the next and wonder why the guitar is cracked or the finish is checked. 
people are trusting you with stuff and finally if you are going to buy a guitar but you won't spend the money to buy a case that it's safe in why are you buying the guitar so before i get back to work on the crappiest guitar case in the world i think i'm gonna have a little time with something that's definitely irreplaceable <laughs> And subscribe if you don't want to do that oh well remember kids electricity will kill you